So something happened with the recording of this demonstration. So I'm showing you the finished product, which somehow got lost because the file got corrupted. So therefore, I have to make do with the, this explanation of coloring our floor plan and also putting dimensions and of course putting in the legends for each of what the colors represent. So in this case, the coloring represents the types of spaces or items within the floor plan. For example, uh, if we take activity areas, I color them with orange and yellow alternatively. And then if we have wet areas like the bathroom floor, we color them with a light blue, not a dark blue. And then for built-ins, I chose something that is a more blue of a violet, so blue-violet. Fixtures themselves are with this more reddish of a violet. Wood is raw sienna, so this is the texture of the wood. Now, if you can have a closer look at what I did with this, it's more of this directional thing. And then for furniture, it's a darker brown or burnt sienna. So these are the only things that I I managed to uh, uh, use as colors from a 12 color set. So it's mine is limited with this Prisma color set. Prisma color set is ideal, right? So when you take a look at how I colored it, it's mainly these rows of strokes which are integrated to each other so they're overlapping when i'm doing them so it's not a solid color it's not going to be this waste of just doing you know very very everything is like all pigment so this one in this case it is more of you can even see the paper on it so it's it's really this number of strokes it it looks good because it creates this so it it does this this thing the it it gives this texture it's nicer than something is very solid so so me colored pencil as a me medium has its flaws so uh i'm using its flaws of this unperfect it'll take you a long time to just color in everything very nicely so what i did was i had these consecutive strokes um, to show you what i mean this is what i did so i'm going to use red i although i've never used red in 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 any of this coloring so i'm just showing you the demonstration of what the strokes are implemented you can you can sharpen this with a blade of course and then my strokes are as such it's slanted okay make sure that you know you're not using a, the wood grain that you have on your rafting board so you need to put like an extra layer of paper so that came out with the texture of wood there but if you have something that's an extra paper underneath you would have this so my strokes are like this so it's overlapping it's like these things okay so it's a one go thing and you don't need to, you know, repeat all of this. Okay. So another, another, uh, consideration that you, you, you need to keep in mind when you're implementing this is pressure. So you can go, uh, if you have a heavier pressure onto the pen, color pencil, this is what you get when you get light in it, light in the pressure, you get lighter color. So don't overdo with the pressure or else you get a darker color you can have a variation uh, in some in some spaces here like uh, there's a darker area and then i and the rest are uh, a bit lighter so you can do that with like something like this 
So more pressure first, and then you go and lighten. More pressure first, and then lighten. More pressure first, and then lighten. So it gives this nice textural uh, look that, that you see here. And then you don't try to, you know, overdo it or keep keep repeating it on the same area. So you can even see this with my yellow. And then for the wood texture, if you can see, it's a different direction. So I had this every other wood plank here, which is 0.2 meter, meters. This has one direction or one slant, and then the, the, the alternate is, is uh, the same. And then the next would be another direction. Of course in this direction so you could you can have this illusion of a wood texture on the lanai here so that's it for coloring but when it comes to dimensions that of course you can't put dimensions on the lower part because that's where you placed your title of the drawing so therefore you can you have the only options of putting dimensions onto the three other sides. Okay, normally there are layers. Okay, first of all, there's a total, overall total on the outermost dimensions. And then on the inner dimensions, it showcases the centers or divisions of the walls here. So here you can see that you know I place the dimension line onto the middle of the and the center of the wall so normally we do this uh, in, in in our layouts in documentation because sometimes the the wall thickness isn't perfect when you do the construction so rather than then uh, uh even place the thickness of the walls because it might change during the documentation stage so it's safer to have to d document the the center of the wall or the middle of the wall rather than having something that is going to change this is considered as point two but in construction sometimes it does not perfectly match that so it would be frustrating if if that happens um, so dimensions, okay, so two layers at least. One is the overall and the other one is the outer part. Like, like this on the side here, okay? Take note that I made a mistake here. If this entire thing is the total overall for this side, and then I have subdivisions or where the divisions of my walls are, I showcase them. If you notice that there's a gap, of the dimension line it's not touching the wall at all so make sure you don't touch okay the dimension line does not go inside so it's a cleaner way of putting dimensions if you can see even here there's a gap take note of the gap so i use a 0.1 millimeter pen and the arrows okay these are arrows they're they're not x's you don't put x here I used a 0.6 or 0.5 mm. So make sure that there are no gaps here in your dimension lines. Like here, it touches, really touches these dimension lines that, so that you mean that. So there are arrows. You can use tiny circles. If these are the dimension lines, you can use tiny circles. You can freehand them or you can uh, use your template, circular template for a small thing than arrows. For the section cut lines, okay, so here I use a 0.8 millimeter to draw these. So the arrow, I just freehand them. I need not, you did not need to draft them, but these are 45 degree types of arrows. So here I use a center line symbol for this one. So it's going through the window here. It's going through the wall here. So they're not exactly aligned together. Here, on the section through BB, you can see the it's going through this and that. So this is my example only. Of course, your design is is different. 
but I'm showcasing an example of how you dimension, how you color, how you place your section, cuts, symbols. So that's it for the floor plan. As far as the section is concerned, you please add in your dimensions of your ceilings. So here, I'm showcasing the level where the bedroom FFL, okay? FFL stands for finished floor line uh, for the bedroom. So I have my 2.4 variation and my 2.7 variation. So I can showcase this. You may opt to place your ceiling height dimensions on both sides if you need to, to showcase if there's a complex, much more complex ceiling. Like for example, if you, there's an apex here, if you created a, an apex of a ceiling, you place the dimensions for that on this side. So if on this side, this is generally what, what I'm showcasing. So I show this in relation to even with the 2.7 and 2.4 relative to the FFL of the bedroom. So you can even place in, of course, your NGL. So, okay, I'm, I'm just writing this with, with a colored pencil. Please, please use your pen. And then I place in this partial circle and then I put an arrow there. This signifies that I'm meaning the, this line to be the NGL. Okay, it's confusing because if you have multiple levels and then you just place in text, they wouldn't know which one is which. So you put an arrow to which line you're referring to, which is NGL, and this is the NGL that I am showcasing. And also this one, bedroom, FFL. And make sure that there are no gaps between the arrow and the line you're referring to. I guess that's it. If you have questions, of course, you ask your professor on some clarifications to this. Next week is going to be midterms already. And so that's it. So this is pretty much a straightforward thing. And if you feel that you need to improve on your plan a bit more or probably even your sections a bit more, ask your professor if you could improve on them for this week and then impl uh, implement this coloring dimension and all the legends here for week six. So thank you very much again for having a, le a listen here and see you again.